In a recent video, I talked about purchasing my very first solar generator, the EcoFlow River 2 Pro, which is this guy behind me. When I was doing my research, I had different requirements set and I was wondering if the estimates were anywhere near accurate. So let's go through the test itself as well as the results coming up next here on Lights and Buttons. depending on how you use your devices, uh, can greatly impact the results. Because for example, if you're doing a lot of CPU intensive activities, your fan is spinning up on your laptop and a lot of heat is being generated, you know you're consuming a lot of power and you might need a lot more charging per day than I do. All right, let's jump into the results. Oh, and I forgot to say that the power station will be starting at 80% because that's the long-term percentage of battery that I'll be storing this unit at. So presuming that I didn't get a chance to charge the batteries up to 100 for the power station, we're gonna start at 80%. Also, I'll be charging the laptop with the 100 watt USB-C port. When I do my tests, I generally run my devices down to about 10% or maybe a little bit less to ensure some kind of consistency when doing a full charge. Originally, I started with my ThinkPad E15 laptop along with our phones. I charged it twice a day to simulate going through a single charge from me and my wife's work laptop and then charging our phones. My wife's phone is an iPhone 14 Pro and I have the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II which is by the way soon to be replaced because it's getting old. After repeating this for three days, at the end of day three, the plan is to charge my camera batteries, which are the Sony NPF Z100s. I found that the ThinkPad E15 takes about 8% per charge and both phones combined does a charge of about five to 6%. Keep in mind that if you have a different capacity power station, these numbers can vary quite a bit for you. Although this just makes it, I had forgotten that my original goal was to charge each work laptop 1.5 times instead of one. So this technically fails if I start my power station being charged at 80%. If I charge my work laptops three times per day instead of two to simulate that 1.5 charges per day, then I can potentially make this work if I charge my power station up to 100% and or use these solar panels, at least theoretically using the numbers that we've gathered from the first test. From the first test, we can see that the laptops and phones take up 30% of the power station's battery capacity each day, and then after day three, I'm projected to have 10% of battery left to charge my camera batteries. But we're not done just yet. I did a second test and I threw in a laptop that has a larger battery capacity, which is the MacBook Pro. And this bumps the numbers up to about 15 to 16% per charge, which is about double from what the E15 has. And you can see just how quickly the power station will run out of juice. And this is similar to the first day where I'm charging each laptop once instead of 1.5 times. So this is kind of simulating really conserving the MacBook Pro's battery power by let's say lowering the screen brightness and all that. And we still won't have enough battery power to charge for a third day. But that's not to say that the power station is completely useless to me. I can still use the solar panel to recharge as I said before, but I was hoping to at least start with three days worth of power from the battery itself, or at least something really close to that. A while back, I had purchased my first solar generator for emergency power during extended power outages. I'm making a series answering questions that I was curious about before making such a purchase. If you haven't seen the main video, I'll provide a link in the description below so you can check it out. This concludes today's video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer those questions. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe as always. See you in the next video.